the look of a black woman on TV had to be like Jane Kennedy or my Diane Carroll. You know what I mean? Uh, it could not be a woman with a, you know, a short nappy afro and brown skin and overweight. So for me, Oprah represented everything in terms of kicking in the door. Wendy Williams, she spent 25 years building her brand as one of the nation's leading syndicated talk show hosts before hitting the airways with a hit daytime TV talk show that was recently renewed for a fourth season. In this interview, I got a rare up close look at Wendy Williams, the businesswoman and the notorious personality that's made her the queen of daytime celebrity talk TV. What you do requires at, to some level a little bit of a mean streak. It requires thick skin. Where does it come from? Where do you get it from? My independence. I am fiercely independent and I've been that way since the day I was born. I've always been taller and blacker than everybody in my first 12 years of life. When I say blacker, I don't mean in terms of the complexion of my skin, but my culture. I was one of four blacks to graduate from Ocean Township High School in 1982. Have you been back? I've been back for a couple of uh, reunions. I stopped because people started dying of real things, you know, like cancer and heart attacks. It, you know, it just got depressing. But I, I was one of four blacks. The other three did not come from the same kind of background I came from. They might have lived like in the apartments or come from a one-parent household, nothing wrong with that. But I came from an extremely solid middle-class background. I don't know how my parents did it, but I always had the best clothes. We always had luxurious Christmases. They paid for our educations. My sister at Tufts, my brother, you know, at Lincoln, and me at Northeastern. I didn't want for anything, and I didn't, didn't know how they did it. I mean, and they are still married 55 years. So I was considered a white girl to the other three blacks. Well, not and, black enough. And believe me when I tell you, I got the business, white girl, from white girl, white sides. girl. And then I'd get it from the white kids, too, in a weird kind of way, because they wouldn't understand black, and they would make fun of black, but then they'd always say, not you, Wendy. Right, you're not like the rest of them. And I was so, I was trapped, plus I'm tall, like I've never been to a prom, you know. Um, boys were always something that I knew would happen when I got out into the world and really could do my thing. But I was more like a wilted flower, more like a, an observer of life back then. On the margins. Yes. But it really helped you in your career long term. It paid off because it made me dig inside of myself to solve a lot of my own problems when I was trapped on that island with my first job, solve a lot of my own problems. And that's where the thick skin develops because at the end of the day, and I hate that phrase, I can't believe I just used it, but at the end of the day, you don't have to like me, I wish you would, but I'm good because I like me. But one thing that you did understand was how the mainstream thinks yeah. and how the people on the fringes think. Yeah. The statement, how you doing, yeah. is something that transcends. How you doing is the official greeting of the Wendy Williams mess. You it may sound like urban, but it can also sound Italian, New Jersey. Yeah. And I think that you... And gay. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I think your understanding of people yeah. uh, is, is a great talent. Deb Mar Mercury yes. was the company that uh, saw the success that you were having on the radio. Yes. Uh, and they came in and approached you about doing a TV show. Did you have any other offers? Yes. You did? That I, didn't work out? Yes. I did my first uh, television pilot um, in 1993. I thought that they were about to scoop me up off radio and I thought, about, I thought I was about to be the biggest thing ever and I was willing to do whatever I needed to do within my moral confines to be on TV, including wear my hair the way they wanted me to, wear flat front khakis and loafers. And you know I'm not a flat front khaki loafer girl, but flat front khakis, loafers, tone down my personality, all these things. I was willing to be what they needed me to be because there was a show that Disney uh, Buena Vista Disney invented, and they were looking for host. Hmm. And so the show was here, and they just plugged me in as host. I'd also been called in to participate in a couple of other shows here and there until Deb Mar called in 2008. And I'm going to tell you something. In fall of 2007, they called. And they called saying the right thing, that a mature, level-headed, business-minded Wendy. I wasn't that girl back in 93. I, was, I would have done whatever you need me to do to be on TV. 
when Debmar Mercury, Mort, Mort Marcus and Ira Bernstein, that's Debmar Mercury, mm -hmm. two great guys, when they called my husband, Kevin, who happens to be my, my manager, manager. Um, they said, we want Wendy and we want to build a show around Wendy. Oh, we're familiar with Wendy and the radio show and the millions of listeners that We've she has. We've seen her numbers. We've seen her numbers. <laughs> you know, we want to build a show around her. We want it all. How she talks about the celebrities, how she gives that advice, do that, that full hour, uh, you know, her laughter, her banter, Enter. Um, I said, okay, well, you can have it, but I want to be one of the executive producers because I no longer want to be on TV at all costs. I want to be on TV on my terms. What you're saying is really something that uh, is really important on this show because you were asking for ownership and editorial control. Yeah. Which is a real hard thing to get. Well, it's a hard thing to get, but you've got to be willing. Listen, if I wasn't going to have, uh, you know, some creative control over the show, along with my manager, my husband, who also, nobody knows me better than him. So I, but we have a fabulous team with the executive producers, David Perler, you know, he's our runner. He is, he has worked with the best, Rosie and George Lopez and the others. David knows talk, you know, Kevin knows me and nobody knows me better than I know me. So. The three of us are the co-executive producers of the show. And I could not be on TV now if I did not have some sort of creative control. I am not that thirsty for money. And people don't get it. Because people all money- People wouldn't have gotten what you were doing. No, well, all money is not good money. And I had a good radio career. Listen, I was perfectly fine. You know, in my dusty room with my microphone, talking to my millions of people, I was leading a nice lifestyle. I was married and happy and was able to buy and do what I wanted. My, our kid, little Kev, he was happy. I was happy when you were under the structure of a traditional media company that yeah. didn't get it, yeah. they didn't like what you were, what you represent, they didn't get you. Well, they didn't get it. They wanted to bend me like Gumby and mold me into being something else. And um, obviously through natural growth and also um, being on TV, I am a more refined Wendy now uh, than I was on the radio, but that's because I had four hours to talk and make my point. So now I gotta get to the point. Which I think it would have been difficult for even Oprah Winfrey because she, as you know, she was in Baltimore, she was in all these markets, but had she tried to go to one of the major network morning shows, right. they probably would have told her, you need to you know, maybe change your look, maybe lose some weight, you need to do this or that, yes. and then maybe one day yes. you'll be, they would have never seen that she would become a person that would be getting $100,000 a week yeah. from 30 different radio stations for dozens of years. My freshman year in college, there are only two uh, real life women um, that I had on my cork board, you know, in the dorm room. One, Vanessa Williams, because she won Miss America, and I thought that was a big deal, and we had so much in common. It turns out now we're friends, but Mr. and Mrs. Williams, the two-parent household, the educational background, Vanessa. Uh, anyway, so I had her on my cork board, and I had Oprah on my cork board. Not because I dreamt of being a talk show host. I wanted to be in radio, but just because I grew up with Jane Kennedy. You know, that, do you remember Jane Kennedy? I do. You know, yeah. back in the day where, you know, the look of a black woman on TV had to be like Jane Kennedy or my Diane Carroll. You know what I mean? Uh, it could not be a woman with a, you know, a short nappy afro and brown skin and overweight. So for me, Oprah represented everything in terms of kicking in the door because I am a larger woman. I, I am one of those fringe people also. I, would Im I, I don't know this, but I would imagine that because Oprah is not a cookie cutter in terms of looks, that she too grew up on the fringe of life. And it's tough in media. And they will call you in the office and tell you. I mean, fortunately not for a talk show host. I guess I can gain a few pounds. I, I don't know that they'd call me in the office. They better not. But, but you did your own thing. You're a celebrity entrepreneur. You yeah. were able to do your own thing. Uh, in an industry where there was a guy who left CNN, uh, Roland Martin, a couple weeks ago. And he said, well, he wasn't, his contract was not renewed. Jeff Zucker, the head of CNN, did mm -hmm. not renew his contract. Mm -hmm. And he said that he thought that the fact that he was black was one of the reasons he didn't get his own show, and that blacks don't get primetime shows. What do you think? You don't see too many. I'm asking you, you're doing the interview. I can't speak for the others, but for me, you know, it was perfect timing. The world was finally ready for a Wendy. 
and I have a terrific team to propel me because I can't do this by myself, you know, and, and I, I will not uh, discredit myself. You know, I, um, I've done a lot of work to get here and nothing's been handed to me. Um, but to, to stay here, you, I've had to align myself with the right team. You haven't fixated on the issue of race, but you've acknowledged it. Race is definitely an issue in the media, you know, and, but, but the Wendy show is not a black thing or a white thing. And I challenge people to tell me that my show is a black thing or a white thing. It happens to have a black host and I am a black woman through and through. But our show is not black thing or white thing. It's a thing thing. It's a, it's a thing thing. And I encourage everybody, I mean, if you ever look at my studio audience, if you really look at who's in my audience, you will see all ages and all nationalities, and they're there for one reason, to cheer and scream and shout. And in between commercials, they're all getting up and doing the Gangnam Style and having a good time. And I don't feel like I have to act any extra black or extra white. I am just Wendy, and that's all I've been all of my life. On your show, you talk a lot about celebrities and celebrity divorces. You see that all the time. Hot topics. You told Kim Kardashian, I think it was two days ago, you said, you need to fire your mother. Yes. Uh, Kanye West may not be around. He's going to be gone, girlfriend. Yes. But in your own life, yes. your husband is your manager, yes. which means he gets 10 to 20% yes. uh, commission. Or in this uh, case, if there's divorces in that half. He's a partner okay. in your production company. Yes. You just started a, a, a partner in your film company. Yes. What Didn't something inside you, just based on the statistics, not a, necessarily a reflection on him or I his understand. character, tell you, maybe not? Well, you know, and Susie Orman, it's, I mean, we go through this a lot because she believes everybody needs to have prenups and women need to, you know, protect themselves and like that. But when I met Kevin back in 1993, yes, I had a, a full body radio career and I was doing really well. Um, he, he had um, a hair salon and then a car wash and I was on the radio, but he saw so much crappy stuff hap subliminally happen to me that, he, after being my boyfriend for, you know, a proven amount of time, he said, let me help you. And I said, you know what? Help me. Because I can get shanked from anybody out here, you know, yeah. just in the heart. So if you can get it from anybody, why not at least <laughs> Keep try, it in the family. To try to work on it in the family? And he was my boyfriend before he became my manager and uh, partner. And then now we have little Kevin. Well, now, I mean, children bond you closer even than the paperwork of marriage. Um, Kevin is, after me, he is my best friend. He is one of the smartest men that I know. Could you ever fire him? And No, I would not fire him as my manager um, because I, 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 I am swimming in shark infested waters mm. as a woman who leads with a smile. How, we, how you and I are talking right now is only a portion of what normally gets projected to the world. I am, hi, you know? But my smile and my kindness is not to be mistaken for a get over, but a lot of people do. In which case, I'll stay sunny. Nobody puts the hammer down like my husband. Nobody has my best interest like my husband. And after him, nobody has my best interest like me. I keep a, a very, very close eye on my business. And so far, so good. I understand what you're saying. And also, all spouses can't work together. I'm not saying anything. It's just a question. It's terrible. It's a business question. It's great when it works. It's <laughs> terrible if it doesn't. That's all I can say. You've expanded. You have your books. You have... Uh, the film company, now you're starting a production company. I'm going so to much. also be doing seven weeks on Broadway in Chicago playing Matron Mama really? Morton. Really? Okay. Um, June 25th through August 11th. Wendy Williams Hair World, my line of, you know I wear wigs, I have thyroid disease <laughs> so my hair is thin, but I, I've made lemons into lemonade. My hairline with wigs and wefting hair and, and all the products that keep it beautiful, that'll be coming out later on this summer. There are so many things that I want to do, but I do it as a partnership um, with my wonderful staff at the show, my wonderful family at home, and you know my wonderful Wendy watchers. When you look at uh, Merv Griffin, Dick Clark, Oprah Winfrey, Ryan Seacrest, yes. Wendy Williams, it's a nice company, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and I think as you continue to fight 
for more ownership and more and keeping control and keeping your brand the way that you want it yeah. to be. More That's, important than all that, it's my quality of life. You know, to me, well, you that's don't have success. quality of life if you're not happy with what you're doing because you know what yeah. you want to some extent. Yes, to a lot of extent. Wendy Williams, I can't wait to have you Thank back you, so Lee. we can talk more. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. And with Wendy Williams, I'm Lee Hawkins. See you next time. My style. Um, is, I guess, has been likened to Howard, which has always been flattering to me. Um, but that's where we veer off after that because I, I hate the gossip word, but I guess I was more gossipy on the radio. I like celebrity, I like celebrity news. I used to um, play the roving reporter and I would interview my little brother, Tommy. He's three years younger than me about anything. So what'd you have for dinner? Did you like it? What did you do? Um, and, and then I would play back and listen to myself.